me through right now you are in the corporate investment banking um looking at diversified lending credit you know and that's where you guys are mitigating risk and everything like that on your day of work when you wake up you go to work you get into the <laughs> office what do you do when you get there like take me through just your day your 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 day your best day at work from the moment you get into the office during the day and as and when you knock off depending at what time you knock off okay yeah that's if i knock off because we, there's a couple <laughs> of disclaimers in what you said a lot of um, assumptions i had you're saying i go to the office well i actually maybe sometimes i work from bed in my bed you never know what if sometimes i work from my couch so, <laughs> great stuff um, great stuff okay <laughs> i guess what i'm saying here is um in a day a normal day might might include I, I there's a request that comes through a request could be a huge multinational company as you walk out of varsity just stick to your guns know who you are um, because whatever extra money that you get that you think is buying you that little extra income that that, that little extra um, I guess you could say freedom you're probably going to make a lot more times than that. Are you going to change every time you make an extra hundred rands per month? Sure. You know, so you kind of, at some point, you have to be the person that you want to be regardless of how much money you have. Sure. Yeah. Wow, that's very powerful, man. That's very powerful. Um, the, the Namibian experience, um, you know, sure. I, I understand that you actually send that by, um, through NetBank because um, they have, um, they have like um, um, branch that side, I like to believe. Um, how was the experience sure. for you there, and what were you doing in Namibia? So Namibia was quite a very nice experience for me. I must say, you can see a smile on my face already. <laughs> um, and that's because um, I hadn't flown like ever been in the air before that, right? So the first time I'm literally walking into um, Berkis from Bari, what's this thing? Um, oh, wow. What's this? Oh, Artambo. The first time I'm walking into Artambo, I'm already taking an international flight. First time. Cool. Mm -hmm. Nice experience. Flew over. Very nice. Uh, enjoyed that. Obviously, NetBank paid for all of that and the accommodation and uh, whatever else they paid. So, <clears throat> um, when I got there, my role was to be mainly my role was to be an interest advisor <clears throat> so uh, you see those huge books that you say we carry yeah there are if the standards in there um and those standards basically what we do there is net bank would they would ordinarily have some non-routine transactions there in namibia even here in SA. so there would be non-routine transactions which they need an IFRS expert to kind of look over and just assess, or, okay, how do we account for this thing? How do we deal with it? And all of that, as far as accounting is concerned. So, yeah, my main role there was to be to fulfill that role, whereby you would have this non-routine transaction that they're doing, or this non-routine event that is happening. And I would then have to write an IFRS paper on that and issue my, 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 my commentary, give it to the CFO, the CFO would then say, okay, fine. Gwena, let's let's do this thing. Then I would then go ahead and set up meetings with the external auditors, give them my paper. They would take that paper and give it to their technical department, sign it off, all done, and then we move on. So that's my my key role. Just very technical, um, very difference based. But I mean, ordinarily, I just worked at university, so it's it's not unfair of them to expect me to. Uh, to deal with efforts but obviously quality so it's a very daunting experience as well because mind you as netbank is the top four well, let's call it top five bank in SA. It, it's the same thing in in in, in namibia so it's a big bank right it's like oh. a proper bank in namibia it's not like a mini branch with one person in there it's a bank <laughs> <laughs> big bank <laughs> so, yeah, yeah a proper bank like sure. there's an entire bank with proper compliance, everything, like, yeah. you know, so it, it's, it's a bank. So what happens is that as you walk in, you have no experience, you're literally coming out of varsity, you are in this new uh, country, and obviously there's some language barriers 
there and all of that. And you have to walk in there and you have to tell this Oita so Eva that actually this is the route we need to take as far as accounting is concerned. It is a daunting, it's a huge responsibility. But I think that because of the quality of the people that have come before us, um, they kind of know that we can handle those kinds of things and we can like, issue papers that auditors can sign off and we should be fine. So, yeah, very daunting, but quite good. And then the social part of the Namibian experience um, was that uh, I found the ZCC uh, branch. Um, Beautiful. And I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the beauty of, of, of uh, being a member of a, of an international church like that, you know. So when you go into other other countries, you just search on Google Maps SCC and it gives you a, a, the nearest SCC church. And um, ordinarily, the church is run exactly like like literally the same way that we did that that the experience is like an essay, um, like Kilitzin Claire there and stuff. Very nice. Um, they have a different way of singing. Um, Bogo and stuff, but um, I mean, what can we say? It's the um, cultural kind of vibe to it. So yeah, enjoyed that. Um, and then yeah, I had a couple of guys at the office who also took me around the area, took me where the rich people in Namibia hang out, and the CEOs and them. So yeah, um, had a nice experience in Namibia. So yeah, um, then I came back to SA to join the the South African business. Yeah. You you touched I think um, on, on on your experience you know as, as when you explain your trade what you were actually you were doing there in the media. Yeah. You you touched some some more you spoke about auditing, you know, and I know that you know within the accounting fraternity there are many branches you know that people go to taxation or auditing or via the banks and everything like that when coming to training and stuff. So sure. let's let's let let's put the two here. Let's put the auditing and let's put the banks. Um, which sure. ones are the best place for training? As in... <laughs> you wanna get me fired now? <laughs> yeah, you wanna get me fired? Um, no, we'll still say that. Out. I don't. Yeah. So I I don't wanna talk. I, I don't wanna create. Um, I don't wanna talk under the umbrella of best. I would rather say what's what are op what options are there right sure. um in that when you're a bank or in a banking environment your experience is very like vastly different from what an auditor does um, on a daily basis so ordinarily as an auditor you are auditing what has happened in the past mm. and by definition so um i think probably 90 percent of the work that one does um, in an auditing environment is looking at the past and just making sure that things are okay and that what has been reported is is proper or not what has been reported, but what is going to be reported is, is solid um, so ordinarily as an auditor you would be assigned different lines you would be going to those lines having those client engagements um engaging with the ceos the cfos of the businesses the financial managers um wherein you go there and you basically ask them questions about the business you learn how their businesses operate so that you can actually get a good and informed um I guess understanding of what has happened in the past year, where the business is, so that when you look at the numbers, you kind of can make sense of them. Whereas, yeah, on the other side, there is also the part of client engagements as well, which is the the banking side. Um, let me actually rather start here. So ordinarily, as a banker, what my experience at NetBank has been was that you are kind of treated as um, an equal employee day one like i said i went to namibia and already when i was landing there i was an influencer advisor i was a an equal member of the team they understood that there's some corporate vibe kind of things that they still need to teach me but as far as competence is concerned as far as being able to deliver and far, as far as my conduct my my commitment to the work my work ethic is concerned they're expecting me to work operate as a fully fleshed um member of the team so they can say when there is this matter go deal with it and i would then go and say okay fine do my own investigations basically lead the story 
um whereas my experience and this is purely my experience my experience in the auditing arrangement because as a as a as a person in banking as well you could also get an experience or exposure in the auditing um, environment so at netbank i would actually go for three months to an audit firm and actually be an auditor right so literally at netbank when you go when you are when you are lent out or well that's such a bad word when you are seconded to um, that audit firm in your first month you are treated as a first year your second month you're a second year the third month you're a third year audit training that's literally the practice so you need to be at a point where you can do what a third year does by the time you're in your third month um and that uh, that that puts a lot of pressure on you obviously that learning curve is quite steep but i guess my point here is as an auditor you kind of also have to go through that grooming those grooming stages and that's that's been my experience whereas when you are in a bank it's almost as if you are expected to come in and run with things um there will be a lot of mentoring where necessary but um you you are given the like the option to run with things let me rather use those words right so yeah be it light engagements be it uh requests dealing with requests when i was in property finance for example my senior um associate would get a request somebody says um hi i need a hundred million to build a mall or to build a shopping center then as that email comes in my senior associate would literally push it to my email box and say Quirna, here's a request and then i would then do all the digging all the scraping and everything get the deal together go present it like literally see it through so you are and that was me in second year that's last year so <clears throat> Yeah, the experiences are a bit different and ordinarily our um, work is more future based and well, it's it's present and future based work. So what I mean by that is we do consider what has happened in the past as far as financials are concerned, where the business is from a performance perspective. But most of the time our when we grant credit as 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 it makes sense you would also want to look at the potential of this person when i give you money now i borrow you a hundred rands i want to make sure that you can pay it tomorrow not that you can pay it today can you are, are you going to be able to pay it tomorrow um so by default being in a bank would then also require you to work to live in the future a bit to kind of assess things that would happen in the future where would this business be would they be able to pay it back how are their forecasts looking back all of those kinds of things. so you could kind of box it um in two to say auditors tend to focus a little bit more on what has happened and why it has happened and all of that whereas bankers tend to look more into how is this looking in five years time how is this thing looking in the next year three years or if there is a short-term request how what has happened right so with the looting for example um as people are burning your shop or are burning your stock or whatever or they are taking their stuff away <clears throat> those people would then come running to net to, to their funders those those clients would come running to their funders to say hey i had stock worth a hundred thousand rands in the shop it's gone Quena, please approve for me an overdraft facility for 200,000 rands. You know? Well, we work more in millions, but you hear what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just making the point that um, as, as, as things happen in the country, in the economy, yeah. they, they directly affect our clients, and that directly affects my daily life then in, in, in turn. You know, um, I, I hope I, I don't get you fired. You know, um, after asking okay. such questions, so I don't, I don't actually now affect your future prospect um, jobs uh, that are. Uh, but I think what I'm getting from here, I think at the end of the day, for me, the way I view it and the way I view the world, I always view the world from a balanced perspective. You know. Uh, and sure. I think in the business space, like you've said, um, or like you've actually alluded to the two auditors looking at what has happened 
in the past, you know, and the banking became more futuristic. You can say the banking is more kind of in the same basket as the actuarist because they are sort of looking ahead, you know, and, and, and mitigating sure. risk and all of those type of things. I think we still need sure. both of them for a balanced business environment because I still think and I believe that, you know, the whole sector, I mean, the whole accounting sector, in the, it's, it's, more, it's almost like you guys are the backbone of the economy. I was watching, I think I once watched a documentary on the power of the fed you know that there, there's a man that i liked in the fed the federal reserve of uh, the united states he has the same name as me and i think that's how i got to connect with him um, i think the former chairman uh, ben Benanke, you know and okay. during the even now obviously you know the fed you know even the central banks are playing a big role in resuscitating or actually making sure that the economy you know booms again and what they sure. did in 2008 during the crash was something called quantitative easing so what yeah. was that is that they would then you know print more money you know sure. and actually now you know lower the interest rates and i'm like these guys you know the responsibilities on their shoulders you guys are having so much responsibilities yeah so i mean the the reserve bank um has a couple of levers to pull so there's the state i was saying um when the economy hits a rock um what does happen is that the the reserve banks have um in air quotes a responsibility to try and resuscitate the economy and how they are able to do it is through what this what this monetary what, what is called monetary policy action and it could be expansionary or contractionary whereby if it's expansionary they're trying to put money into the into the economy which is what you were just talking about um whereas if maybe the economy there's high inflation and whatever else and they want to try and calm the economy down they would do contractionary so in the case of COVID, what has happened is that they try to resuscitate the economy by putting people's uh, rather people putting money into people's pockets how they do that is by reducing the repo rate the repurchase rate um uh working the repo rate and then what would then obviously that would in turn reduce the prime rates and that would then mean people have more money and people will spend more and the economy will then get back up and going so yeah that's those are the key um well that's basically the the, the, the basic um, I guess explanation of that. So obviously, in a in a in a in a, a financial global financial crisis situation, there would be a whole lot more of of what would be done in 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 that in that light. And then there's also the fiscal policy part of it, where it's now the government that's trying to resuscitate the economy through the 350s and everything else, as an example. And I think that's where there needs to be a balance, you know, um, the fiscal policy and the monetary policy, and that's where you also need to have yeah. a good state because the fiscal policy as well yeah. is actually very much important, you know, and especially government spending and all of these things. And in the mix of everything is the GDPs and all of those type of things. But, you know, I don't want us to now get so much into the technicalities of what you guys do, <laughs> which is very no, no. interesting um, in my side. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's, I'm actually quite obviously impressed about this this conversation and how you you are in the detail about it um, because ordinarily we would get some level of training on these things um, in school and in economics and stuff. So, but anyway, yeah, let's let's leave that. Let's leave that. <laughs> so now um i think we've spoken initially even now we're speaking about the banking you know banking versus audit sure. and stuff and i think at the end of the day is about someone's intentions because i think when i look sure. at your moves i think your intentions from the get-go was to get into 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 banking you know i, I see that you, sure. you 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 have you have done some online courses in Udemy about investment banking. So I can just see that this man is actually into this banking thing. And also another thing that I think sure. you love or you're into is property as well, because I think you have a certificate sure. with, uh, with UCT, University of Cape Town sure. property development um, on, on, on that side. Take me through right now, you are in the corporate investment banking, um, looking at diversified lending credit, you know, and that's where you guys are mitigating risk and everything like that. On your day, 
of work when you wake up you go to work you get into the office what do you do when you get there like take me through just your day your 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 day your best day at work from the moment you get into the office during the day and as and when you knock off depending at what time you knock off okay yeah that's if i knock off because there's a couple <laughs> of disclaimers in what you said a lot of um, assumptions i had you're saying i go to the office well i actually maybe sometimes i work from bed in my bed you never know what if sometimes i work from my couch so <laughs> great stuff um, great stuff okay <laughs> anyway, i guess what i'm saying here is um in a day a normal day might might include I, I there's a request that comes through a request could be a huge multinational company um let's give it the name whomever mr price or whomever uh, they want to maybe uh yeah buy another company or they want to uh sell well maybe expand or whatever it is that they and want Mr. to Mr. Yeah. Price and Mr. Price have been buying a lot of, you know, they've been buying a lot of companies during this COVID, um, uh, yeah. which is quite interesting to watch as well. I think they bought this other, sure. I don't know, this oh, kitchen where, um, yeah, but anyway, I was just interjecting there. You can continue. Yeah, no, no problem. So uh, um, I actually look after Mr. Price um, as a matter of fact. So that is quite a weird, in, uh, uh, um, I guess you could say, coincidence. But um, yeah, so uh, Mr. Price would come and say, this is what we want to do. OK, let me not talk about actual names. Um, what would happen is the client would come say, I want to do whatever it is. I want funding. So I would then say, do the initial assessment of the request. And what could that mean is, depending on what they're asking for, I might maybe want to see how they've performed in the in the previous year. I might want to see, okay, how is the COVID-19 impact been looking like, um, be it on their performance and their forecasts. Um, are they classified as an essential service provider? Are they able to trade at different levels of lockdown? How am I expecting those levels of lockdown to look like for the rest of the year? Um, would they survive another level five um, if it does come? So those like that's credit assessments right there. So would they survive another COVID uh, level five? Um, how are their forecasts looking like? Like I was just saying, and then. Um, at the end of all of that, there was also now what was topical in the past couple of weeks was the looting impact. How many of their stores were burnt out? Uh, are they covered from an insurance perspective? Do they have sufficient funds to restock those places to rebuild where they need to rebuild where maybe there's some distribution centers which were burnt down or looted? Are they, do they have money to rebuild? So, yeah, it's you basically look at as many risks and as many problems that you can try and see and then you would then start a paper that paper would then include obviously what how they've performed the the previous the past part of it and then maybe a good 60 percent of it would then be okay forecasts how do we expect them to do all of those questions that i've asked they would then answer and then I would put that in the paper and then I would then sit back as a credit manager and say, okay, fine, depending on their answers, depending on how they've performed, this is my verdict. I think we can give them a billion rands or I think we can do only 500 million or let's not, let's do a mix of this or, you know, I would then say, okay, maybe let's just securitize this like that. So in some instances, if they want like a term debt kind of an arrangement where they saying give us a billion for the next five years um you would also want to see if you can get some level of security in whatever form um be it guarantees or whatever you would factor those in and see if you're fine with the level of risks that you were taking as a bank um you would also look at um I guess also your appetite as a bank as well on the name itself you know um are you are you comfortable to be associated with a, a client that might come up in in, in zondo commission reputational <laughs> risk is key do you see that so yeah, yeah. yeah it's 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 very like i'm saying 
if something happens in the economy, um, in some way, shape, or form, one does need to also apply their minds to it as far as sending money out of the bank because every cent that goes out must come back. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 what I do on a daily basis. No, that's 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 that's, that's super great. You know, um, yo, like that sounds like uh, you you you're in the mix of these big transactions that I hear you actually spit out. And uh, I remember this other day thinking that, you know, like sometimes like a normal person like myself would actually look at their, maybe just see their account um, and look at the balance and stuff. Um, and sure. we're used to seeing, you know, certain numbers of zeros, you know. So I can sure. just imagine with you guys working with such big capital that you, 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 like you, 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 you're working with millions, like you actually said that, you know, this is, sure. you know, for us, so for some of us, we will actually be like, even just seeing it there, be like, Evan, give me Leon, give me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, um, we, they spare us those, those, those heart attacks of seeing actual money. Look, like, I don't think there's a banker that has actually seen money in, in, in a vault or anything. Like, it's all numbers on the screen. You know, we conceptually obviously understand that it's actual money, but you wouldn't necessarily feel that weight. Um, it's just the thing of you have to wear different caps. As you're adding more zeros, you have to wear different caps and you need more credit approvals because now the risk is higher. If I'm sending out, if if, if, if a committee approves a hundred thousand rents um, overdraft versus a billion rent, there's, there's definitely a lot more people that must approve that, which is which is the case. So um, a request would then go through me, would go through my senior, would go through a whole lot of some requests can even get to the CEO of the bank, you yeah. know. So it's 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 really a matter of how many zeros are on the request. The more the zeros, <laughs> the more the more people, the more the more the eyes that need to look at that. As an outro, um, um, let's talk about the opportunities um, that are available for um, CA, so chartered accountants in the market. Okay. So obviously, definitely, you know, you guys are in demand. You know, you guys are the backbone of business, um, and subsequently the backbone of the economy because business has, you know, you know, one of the important aspects in the economy and in the economic booming so sure. the opportunities that lie in the market for someone like you oh <laughs> a lot right um uh, hey it's yeah um okay let me put it like this as a bank we fund the whole economy right? sure like like there isn't like the, we find parastatals, uh, municipalities, we find Popen, Kabodi, Limited Sabonata, the Andro Tranta. Yeah. We find we find everywhere. <laughs> so um as far as exposure is concerned, I, I just wanna make this point. Um as far as exposure is concerned, I'm in diversified lending. So by diversified lending credit, it means that I do look after different types of clients in different sectors. So I would look at the life healthcare, I would look at the Mr. Price, I would look at like an Afrocentric or whatever. So it would like be different business in different um, sectors or yeah, I would look at the telecommunication or something like that. So yeah, you get exposure to that, which is nice. Um, and it's quite key while you are, a, you are a CA trainee, you want to have that exposure. Equally so, when you now go want to go permanent, right? Um, because of the training that we've been subjected to, and I'm not saying that as if we are being tortured, right? Um, I'm just saying that we, we do go through quite um, a lengthy training process starting from varsity. One is able to adapt to quite a lot of the environments that that one is thrown into. Um, so my 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 boss from a CA training. So um, my boss, as a who's to, to my report to indirectly, she is a CA trainee, but she's a training officer. So she she actually is the head of the training program. So you can see that accountant, chartered accountant, and then you are doing 
HR vibes kind of things. There's obviously the guys who are lecturers. There's the guys who are definitely like the numbers guys, your CFOs and whatever. That's like quite vanilla. But and then there's guys who are investment bankers. Um, that's the front office guys. Then there's the guys who are like keeping the line, making sure that uh, the credit risk is fine. Um, there's the guys who who uh, I mean I mean even even on the marketing side you would find CAs in some instances. So. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying here is the because of the skill set that we get from high from varsity and even the exposure while you while you're in training, it, that kind of broadens the what the, the options that are available out there. So that's that's why a CA can be a lecturer, can be a banker, an auditor, a, a trainer, an IFRS advisor, a, you know. A, it's because of that experience. You look at the JSE right now, and you look at who is holding those board positions. You'll find tons of CAs there as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, it's it's mainly it's not a matter of people are of it's a weird breed of people or whatever. It's just a thing of to get to be a CA one does go through some training that does I guess really require them to have that broader guess view of things you're not going to be an expert of everything but if you do actually get thrown into an environment because of what you've been through already as a as, as part of your training you you tend to make the most out of it yeah i know in in, in my opinion yeah. well maybe is an opinion which is very kind of limited but um in my opinion in my humble yeah. opinion um in the people that i've studied who are in business i i think you know, well, according to me, you know, some of the best CEOs, um, um, I think those that come or have some stint in, in accounting, you know, because I think it just exposes you to how the business world and how the business leaders work, you know, and uh, sure. I, I think, you know, CEOs that are accountants or come from the accounting profession or are CAs, I think they, yeah. they, they really, you know, are good, you know, in, in my eyes, you know, I'm not saying that... Uh, sure. Other CEOs are not good, or if you didn't do accounting, you can be a better CEO. But I think you sure. guys have an, a proper understanding of how the business work, not only from a technical perspective, but theoretically as well, and and and, and also sure. um, the whole you know finance behind. Because I think the biggest backbone of a business is, is the finances. You know, as much as the marketing is important and everything like that, but the cash flow, which is something that you guys are so much invested in, it's very important. Sure. Sure. No, that's 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 very true, um, Ben. And um, it's just the, the 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 reality of where things are right now. Perhaps over time, with the robotics and whatever else taking over, um, we will also have to evolve as a as a as a profession, actually. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Um, this conversation can go on and on. You know. Um, sure. But I've definitely learned a lot about you know the accounting profession. Maybe in my other life, sure. you know, I'll be an accountant. Who knows? <laughs> no, don't be an accountant. I'm at the office and it's flipping seven o'clock. Actually, it's eight. So, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, but a uh, great conversation and thank you very much for availing your time and your knowledge and your information and your wisdom. Um, hopefully this will help a lot of aspiring, you know, CAs and those that are aspiring to get into, you know, courses, you know, of, 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 sure. I mean, of, of, of accounting as and when they go forward. Sure. No, um, I guess my, my somewhat, um, somewhat closing remark says that uh, a lot of guys tend to not know what they don't know and, and it's natural like that and i think what people should not be afraid to ask for mentorship um uh, just send that dm send that whatever ask somebody to to help you point you in the right direction and um, ordinarily um, you will eventually find somebody who's going to have the capacity to help um, and, and, and actually contribute to us that success story of yours. So, yeah, um, I'm just also hoping that that was of somewhat help to somebody out there. Um, <laughs> it definitely did. Yeah. Okay. No, good to know. Good to know. Yeah, it definitely did. Yeah. No, thank you very much. Um, and, yeah, we will meet um, probably... 
uh, in the spaces, you know, and um, and yeah, um, we look forward to seeing you, you know, um, you know, getting into these things and really, um, you know, going sure. into those ladders. And yeah, thank you very much. Well, the hope is to create my own ladder um, at some point, but yeah, um, I guess uh, thanks for the wishes. <laughs> And uh, I do hope that uh, you will also be successful in your, in your endeavors and that you're not, uh, uh, I guess, being too, too harsh on the, that marking that you're saying you're busy with. On those <laughs> um, it's very depressing, you know? It's very depressing. Yeah. I don't know the depressing things. I don't, I don't like do it, but I have to do it anyway, but it's depressing. But, but yeah, no. Sure, sure. Um, um, thank you very much. All right, then. No, have a good night, man. I'm going to head home as well. Thanks.